Hey forkers, trying to figure out what to put in your fridge and freezer? Come on back, I'm gonna give you some ideas. So we're trying to only go to the grocery store every two weeks if we can help it right now that the COVID is on. And so we try to load right up as much as we can. Produce is tricky because as we know, it goes bad. But I'm gonna walk you through what we put in our fridge and freezer and the produce we keep on our countertop that tries to get us through two weeks worth of meals. So as you can see down here, we've got a whole bunch of fruits. So we have apples, we got clementines, there's lemons up there. I like to start every morning with some hot lemon. There's some tomatoes, garlic, fresh ginger. So these are the kind of things that keep on the countertop really nicely and that aren't gonna go bad. We also eat a lot of bananas. These aren't even all the bananas that we have. I went to a store near our house the other day and they sell bananas that are going ripe and they sell them for dirt cheap. So we, we get them, we let them ripen on the counter, we freeze them, we use them in baking, smoothies, making ice cream, nice cream as they call it. There are endless uses for bananas in the whole food plant-based kitchen. So let's take a look inside of the fridge. It's not the tidiest. I didn't prep this. I wanted to just show you exactly what we got and, and what our fridge looks like. Uh, it's not made pretty for this video, as you can see. We keep some nuts in here. We'll keep um, things like pecans and walnuts in here so they don't go rancid. As you can see, I've got a rogue avocado that was starting to turn on the counter, so we put it into here. We'll use this either just to put it on top of any kind of Mexican dish we make, or we can make like a salad dressing out of that. Or just make it, take it out and put it on a sandwich as a little bit of a spread. It's really tasty. We got our miso. Miso is good in a lot of sauces. It gives a nice little spicy kick that also gives like kind of a, an umami flavor. Almond milk, salsa, uh, chia seeds. We got some mushrooms, tahini. Tahini is like a magic sauce. You can use it in a lot of baking. You'll notice we've got a lot of containers here that are just full of stuff. There's there, anything in our fridge could be, you know, uh, different hummuses that we make. I've got my sourdough starter here that I make sourdough bread with. I got some ganache in here that I made the other day using just chocolate chips and almond milk. Nut butters, applesauce. I got a balsamic glaze I made, barbecue sauces, hot sauce, ketchups. You know, kind of all the typical, usual things you would buy. Inside of our crisper, you're going to see a lot of tofu, some tempeh. There's some diet cheese in here. Uh, we don't use it very often. There's some um, Yves bologna that my son uses for sandwiches. There are also some cheese in here. Yeah, and some Philadelphia cream cheese spread. My kids still have dairy. They eat a little bit of it. We don't judge them for it. Uh, we don't touch the stuff, but my kids still eat it from time to time. I have my kombucha in here that I make. I have a video on the YouTube channel telling you how I make kombucha, so you can check that out if you're curious. And then the crisper, it's just loaded with a whole bunch of different stuff. There's peppers in there, cucumbers, salads, greens, kale. It's good to have something like kale, which is a nice hearty uh, green that lasts a long time, so that way when you burn through all of your other greens earlier on in the week, you still have kale left. It, it'll last a lot longer. So we uh, will go through this. If we need to top up on anything throughout the week, it's, it's usually produce. But we try to make it all last, and we often have a lot of frozen stuff too, which I'll show you in a second. In our freezer, we have any number of things from this. Is some uh, fresh pasta I made using tofu. That's extra. We have... Uh, here are some granola bars that I made that we keep in here. Oh, what's this? Oh, these are little oat cookies. I have a sausage. On my website, there's a, a recipe for making your own sausage using but a wheat gluten. So you can check that out. I have one left. We got so much frozen fruit in here. I just made bread this morning using my sourdough. So I cut up some bread, it's in here. Lots of frozen fruit, frozen vegetables, and I just made some muffins, so we keep muffins in here that are gonna go bad, and then we just pop them out and microwave them, and then put them in the air fryer. So last year, one of the things we did was invest in an extra freezer space in our house, just so we could do this sort of thing where we don't buy groceries or go to the grocery store as often. 
Uh, but also because I was starting to experiment a lot more with cooking and batch cooking and making sauces and that kind of stuff. And I wanted to not waste anything. So we freeze a lot of the stuff that I make that we can use as staples. So in here we've got, uh, this is some frozen ice cream I made this morning. Uh, we got a lot, we got extra frozen fruit in here. We've got extra frozen vegetables in here. Uh, I keep some walnuts and the extra pecans in here as well. Some of the sauces and things I've made, I've got a, a bechamel sauce in here. You can use that for pasta, uh, for putting on top of, you know, vegetables and whatnot. It's really tasty. A, uh, a, a vegan cashew sour cream sauce. I don't really love sour cream, but this stuff doesn't taste as sour creamy and it's really, really yummy. I got a macadamia raw cheese I made in here. I've got raw marinara sauce on here that's really good on pasta. And I've got my, these big chunk things. Uh, this is brule. This is uh, something Dr. Gregor invented or came up with anyway. What this is, is it's um, boiled barley, rye, oats, lentils. You boil uh, equal amounts of those together so that they're all cooked and mushy and then you mix them together. You, uh, you can use them in one cup increments once they're cooked and that's kind of like an oatmeal. So I just make a huge batch of that and I keep it in the freezer and the night before, if I know I'm gonna have that for breakfast, I'll just take one out and leave it on the counter and then I'll steam it in the morning and that's a really delicious quick breakfast that you usually like oatmeal. So I'll top it with fruit, maybe a little bit of maple syrup or, or uh, a few fruit puree or something just to give it a little extra zing or flavor, some cocoa powder. It's really easy to make a quick uh, quick breakfast out of that. And then we got lots of frozen vegetables in here and we keep our spices in here too because they keep a little bit longer. Well, that's what I've been told. So that is what we keep in our fridge and our freezers. We just did a big full shop and so we are loaded up for the next couple weeks. And uh, this should last us and we might need to top up a little bit on fresh produce, but hopefully not. That's why we, we load up on the frozen stuff. So what we try to do is by the end of the week, we just have a lot of a bowl meal or a build a salad from scratch or a pasta bar. So just things that we can just make with whatever we have left. I recommend that. Anything that I have that needs specific things for recipes, I try to make at the top of the week or the first week of our grocery shop. And then that way on the last week or the last half, we can kind of just freestyle it and, and make meals from scratch just by thinking. And I recommend that. Planning in advance is, is your best weapon, especially with produce, you don't want it to go bad. So get a sense of how much fruit your family eats a week, how much produce you go through, and that way you're not buying too much and it's going bad, or even worse, not buying enough, and then you're just eating crap or junk because you don't have enough produce. And often buying frozen is even better than fresh because a lot of vegetables and fruit are flash frozen. And so as soon as they're picked, they're put in and then they are as fresh as you can get them. Sometimes vegetables that are fresh are, are less you know, fresh really because they travel to you and they take longer to get there. So there's nothing wrong with buying frozen, it's just as good as fresh if that's all you can get. And especially depending where you live, if seasonality is an issue, here in Canada, you know, we don't have berries year round. So we rely on a lot of frozen berries. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If so, please like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things. Thanks, Forkers.